My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you're here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Mother Immaculate, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Jesus, we turn to you as the Good Shepherd. That's what you are giving us today in the Gospel. These are the beautiful images of, of shepherding that you're presenting to us that we heard yesterday in the Gospel too. You are the Good Shepherd, the one that looks after us, the one that cares for us. Maybe we're a little bit dis distinct from the image of a shepherd because we're kind of city people. And so when we think of a shepherd, we think of maybe you with the, the sheep walking around the fields, whatever it might be. For me, that, that kind of lifts my heart to think of the, the shepherd in the tranquility of the fields, maybe the sound of the, the Sea of Galilee in the background. And there we are, the sheep, listening to your voice, Jesus. And here we are today, maybe in the midst of a city with a lot of traffic going around in the, in the room uh, that I'm in at the moment and thinking about you as my shepherd. You are the one leading me to the green pastures, leading me to the still waters in this prayer. And I thank you for that, Jesus. It's also the beautiful image that we have of, of the priest and the priesthood. And as a priest, Jesus, I want to thank you that you are my good shepherd too, and that you give me the example of how you want me to be for, for your people, to be a shepherd. It's not an easy thing for any of us to be, Jesus, because you're the shepherd and we're very much uh, in your shadow. We can't do this without you. And sometimes we fail. Sometimes we fail very drastically, but help us priests, especially today, Jesus, to, to be good shepherds in your name and to look after the flock that you have entrusted to us. From the gospel today, Jesus, you tell us that, that you are the gate of the sheepfold. And I like that image because I'm thinking about how you protect us, how you keep us safe. The fathers of the church saw this very much as your protection from heresy from ideas that are very dangerous and very false. And sometimes there can be little thoughts, even little kind of spiritual thoughts that might be very enticing to us that, that draw us away from the truth. And in the history of the church, many have, have fallen prey to those, those, those little thoughts that lead us away from the truth. So we begin to think things about you, Jesus, and, and believe things that, that are wrong. And that's why you're the good shepherd, because through the, through the church, through the teaching authority of the church, through the, the gift of the Holy Spirit, you're keeping us always within the sheepfold. And that's another kind of nice thought for us as we're, as we're meditating in our prayer today is how we're part of that sheepfold. All the baptized, we are your flock. Conventionally in English, people often talk about the priest and his flock, that how many are in your flock or that man there, he's part of my flock. And it's a nice image, you know, that, that we belong to you, Jesus. We, we're part of your flock. And that sense of belonging is certainly something for me that, that, that's very important. I think there comes a point in our life whenever we finally feel that we, we belong. You know, for me, maybe I would say throughout my 20s, uh, I wasn't quite there yet. It's, it's a kind of a formative time in your life. And, and you're growing, you're developing, you're in, you're in college, you're, you're, you're beginning to work, you're having lots of new experiences, but you kind of don't feel that you've kind of arrived in life yet. And that you, maybe things are in a stage of preparation. And then there comes a point where things finally just seem to click into place where you begin to feel that you, you, you belong. You, you, you kind of find your niche in, in the world and, and in the church. And that sense of belonging gives us so much hope and encouragement, Jesus, to know that we're part of something which is, which is much bigger than, than ourselves. You know, we think and we look at these statistics for the church and we know that there are, there are, there's a billion of us in the world. Maybe today there are Christians who are very few in number in parts of the world where they feel very alone and don't feel that they have a lot of other Christians around them. And that can be a very lonely experience. But whenever we begin to think and reflect about the flock, then we think, well, there are, there are so many of us. That gives us encouragement. And it's not just all the Catholics who are, who are here upon this earth at the moment. You know, we think of all the whole flock of, of Jesus that, that is existing in, in heaven and in purgatory too. 
and how we can help that flock that 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 is suffering in a sense in suffering that that time of purification by by praying for them and so our our sense of belonging is greater even than than what we experience here on this earth this is the sheepfold jesus that you speak of it it is your church it is all of those sheep that you have gathered to yourself that you might look after us and protect us and then there's all the sheep in heaven too <laughs> who are helping us with their prayers, who are helping us with the encouragement and the example of, of their lives and of their faith. And so this sense of belonging is its something much bigger than, than maybe I can fully appreciate at times. We belong to the church. We belong to your sheepfold. And sometimes we might maybe mistakenly think of that a little bit like belonging to a club. Pope Benedict spoke very nicely about this. He said, the church has its origins not as a club or even a circle of friends, but as the people of God coming together for the word of God and especially the Eucharist. So there we are. We're not just a club. It's not like we're, we've signed up to some kind of membership and, you know, there are lots of rules in this club. And yeah, if we don't like it, you know, we just leave. It's not a club. It's not like we just kind of join a, a golf club and you know, we play a few rounds of golf and, and then you know, we, we kind of check out of that and we, we do our work, we do our family and that's just kind of one little part of our life. No, that's not the reality of the church. We are the people of God who gather around your word, which is the scripture that you place into our heart and the Eucharist. You feed us with your own body and blood. That's the, that's the beautiful image of the shepherd, the one who lays down his life for us. That's literally what you're doing, Jesus. But maybe we don't always feel that we belong. And I think that's more to do with us, Jesus, that maybe our hearts aren't always so open. Maybe we don't experience the, the, the beauty or the reflection of, of, of what you're offering to us. Maybe sometimes some of the conditions of our life make us feel that, that, that we don't belong, that we're not quite there yet, I suppose, like me in my 20s. But that's not the reality. That's not how you see it. That's not what you tell us in the gospel today. You say, I am the gate of the sheepfold. I am the gate. I heard a lovely story about some soldiers during, during the Second World War they were fighting in Europe and one of their comrades was killed in action. And before they moved on from that battle to the next, his comrades wanted to give him a proper Christian burial to be able to at least tell his mother and his loved ones that they had laid him to rest in a, in a dignified way. So they gathered his remains and they went to the nearest church and there, there was a little graveyard attached to the church. And they knocked on the door of the, 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 pro, the parochial house to find the priest and said, explains the situation to him, that he was their fallen comrade. And before they moved on, they wanted to give him a proper Christian burial. So the priest said, well, uh, was he a Catholic? No, they replied, he wasn't. Ah, the priest said, uh, the graveyard is only for the, the holy flock of Christ. He cannot be buried on consecrated ground. But before they had a chance to become kind of a little bit disappointed by that, the priest suggested that perhaps they could bury their fallen comrade in a beautiful and dignified manner just outside the little wall of the cemetery. So they decided that that's exactly what they would do. So they took the body of their fallen friend and outside the wall of the graveyard just uh, beyond it there they laid to rest their friend who had died and they give him all of the dignity that we would want for any of our loved ones after the war had been won they before they were heading back to their own country they decided that they would gather at the the graveside of their friend and there they would say a prayer and remember him uh, and be able to at least tell his mother and his loved ones that they had tended to his grave again. They made the journey back to the little church and they went to the graveyard and they, they looked everywhere for the grave, but they couldn't find it. They walked all around the outside of the wall and there they could find no grave, no remains at all of where they had buried their comrade. So they knocked on the door of the priest's house and said, For Father, we, we, we came to pray at the, the grave of our friend. And we could not find him. The priest said, well, I was thinking about it afterwards and it didn't seem right to me, didn't seem good that we should, when I saw the way in which you loved this man, that we should bury him that way. They said, so you moved his body? And he said, no, I moved the wall. That's our Jesus. That's you. You move the wall for us, Jesus, to keep us within the sheepfold. 
Help us, Jesus, always to feel that we belong and to respond to you with the love that you have for us, our Good Shepherd. I give you thanks, my God, for the good resolutions, affections and inspirations that you have communicated to me during this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect. My Mother Immaculate, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.